Greetings. For a number of years, I've been following an interesting phenomenon in South Korea that I describe as the, the Bacchus lady phenomenon or the coffee lady phenomenon. And of course, all relevant links will be in the low bar. But before I begin and talk about the topic specifically, let me first briefly, and many of you know already because you watch my videos, you're already familiar, uh, remind you that South Korea has a Confucianist or Neo-Confucianist culture that is still very prevalent but has been diminished, dwindling, and not as strong as it used to be. And this Neo-Confucianist culture basically stood as the backbone of South Korean culture for untold centuries. Due to the internet and the way the world's connected, something I've referred to, and I admit some of this is not, I'm not the first one to mention this term or use this term, a kind of monoculture, many outside influences have disturbed what might be called the monolithic culture, neo-Confucianist culture of South Korea. And the results of this are quite interesting. Coffee ladies, or Bacchus ladies, and Bacchus is a kind of energy drink sold in South Korea, are so-called ajuma, older women, uh, 50 years old or upwards, sometimes into their 70s, that sell coffee or Bacchus energy drinks to people. I say all this in air quotes because many of them are actually engaging in prostitution. They try to appeal to the older generation, 60 plus, 70 plus year old men who simply enjoy the company of women and apparently have some, still have some libido and want to exercise that libido. And it can be quite cheap, uh, 30, the equivalent of 30 USD, sometimes only 20 if it's a repeat or regular customer. But that in itself isn't particularly interesting. How it got to there and why they're doing it and what the sort of socio-cultural implications of this, that those are the things that are interesting. So as I explained in the beginning, South Korea has traditionally had this Neo-Confucianist culture, and one very important element of Neo-Confucianist culture and Confucianist culture in general is respect for elders, elderly people, people that are more advanced in years, people that are simply more aged than you are. You respect them. This has... A positive side and a downside. It is, like so many things in our world of human beings, a double-edged sword. The positive side is that traditionally elderly people, grandparents were taken care of by their children and other immediate family members, and so there was no need for a kind of social safety net for older people. The jagged and rather negative side of the double-edged sword are well, as an incident such as the ferry incident, which many of you had heard about, and I had talked to a gentleman about in depth on MGTOW Talks, wherein, to make a long story short, the more aged, advanced captain issued orders to a bunch of children. They blindly obeyed, and in their blind obedience, they met a watery grave. And I'm not saying that this is directly related, but it certainly had implications in the perception of South Koreans who routinely just blindly obey their elders because they're elders, not necessarily because they embody wisdom, but simply because they're elders. That is to say, the respect accorded to South Koreans based on their age, this deference, is not one based on wisdom. It's not particularly scrutinized. It's not very selective. They don't think, oh, Mr. Kim is particularly wise. But, um, you know, Mr. Ibom Suk is not. And I first encountered this attitude, incidentally, when I went to work there the, the first week of, of work at, in South Korea. That my understanding of respect was a little bit different. That is to say, you were never supposed to disagree with someone older than you. I didn't know that at the time, but I learned my lesson quickly. But moving on to this specific point... We have this situation where older, unattractive, way past the wall, withered ajuma, that's the term for older woman, women are selling coffee and energy drinks, and they're way past the wall. 
Why is this occurring? Well, I mentioned that South Korea doesn't have a particularly potent social safety net, not like that in Europe or in the United States or Canada. And traditionally, these people relied on their offspring, their children, to take care of them. Many of their own offspring are in financial trouble and have their own dire affairs to attend to. And some of them just don't care. They're just kind of doing their own thing. This is, of course, in part the influence of this monoculture and for better or worse, the destruction of these traditional Confucianistic structures that we find in South Korea. I'm not going to comment on whether this is good or bad. This is, to me, like a meteorological phenomenon. It's something to observe, to possibly draw inferences from, and maybe even some conclusions, but that's about it. The disintegration and crumbling of traditional South Korean values, uh, cultural values, that is where children took care of their parents, is no longer in place. And what do we see? We see older women that certainly could never appeal to younger men selling their bodies, what's left of those bodies, to older wizened men themselves, retirees and what have you, for super cheap prices, 20 and 30 bucks a pop, or even less in some cases for repeat customers. And there are a number of interesting things to observe here. One something that's been observed continuously in the MGTOW sphere is that the primary means of interaction between men and women, the primary commodity, seems to be sex. And it isn't just sex, say, between, I don't know, 18 and 30. Apparently, it goes well into the 70s. I mean, women who are 50 plus, and these women, traditionally, they stop styling the hair. They just kind of curl it up to sort of indicate their status, these ajuma. This seems to be an almost automatic instinct on the part of women when they interact with men. And it seems to just transcend the age category, be it age 18, 20, 25, 35, 40, well into your 70s, apparently, according to what we can see here. These Bacchus women, or coffee lady women, they do not have any qualms about this because they have to. Now, let me say, I kind of understand their position, and I honestly don't blame them for it. It's kind of akin to my mind to the uh, the old guy, well past his prime, whose really only skill in life was his pugilistic skills, maybe, and you know, he hashed out a couple of fights and made a couple of bucks or quid here and there, and because of hard life circumstances, he's pitted against guys that are you know, 30, 40 years younger, he has no chance, he does what he can. And he can make some money basically by just being a punching bag, right? Former pugilist lost his youthful glory, blah, blah, blah. And it's not too dissimilar. These women, many of them might have been their prime, uh, prime beauties in their 20s, are certainly not that anymore. And they're left to do what they, they can do. Now, it should also be pointed out that South Korea has, and you can check out the data in the low bar, the worst case of poverty amongst elderly people in the OECD uh, r- uh, roster of countries, uh, by far the worst, and also by far the some of the worst government spending and investment, and once again, this is judgment-free, this is just a neutral observation, worst government spending and investment in social welfare for elderly people compared to most OECD countries. The other interesting thing to observe is that South Korea has a horrifically bad birth rate, worse than Japan, if you can believe that. So what's there to do? We see that automatically that the default position of the female is just to go to sex for resources. Just as I said, a man who had been a pugilist or some sort of laborer who's well past his prime would probably go back to that as well. After all, his only values and his doings women's primary values and their bodies and their beauty. And when all that's gone, you kind of sell it to the next highest bidder, whether you're a punching bag in a ring to guys who are 20, 30 years younger than you, or alternatively, uh, you know, 80 year old guys who apparently want to get their rocks off. And additionally, this is a minor, uh, not not so minor problem. They often try to inject these guys in order to facilitate the act with something that allows the men to maintain their erections and these needles aren't clean. And apparently, among the visitors of the Bacchus women, the coffee ladies, 
there's some incidence of uh, rate of incidence of uh, STDs as high as 40%. Once again, you can check that out in the low bar. What's to do? Well, as I said, I'm an observer. I have no partisan interest in this way, in this thing, one way or another. But one could imagine that if South Korea were to pursue a, pursue a more Western policy regarding uh, social welfare and social safety nets, and it's not nearly as robust as it is in the West, we could probably make a bunch of predictions that aren't too far off from the consequences of the things we've seen in uh, places like the UK and Canada and the United States. Human beings are, after all, human beings. And though we are different ethnically, racially, in, in many important ways, we are far more similar to each other than we are different. And thus, if you were to inject the same kind of government interference and, and government aid, at a, particularly at a much younger age, I suspect you'd see many of the similar phenomena we've borne witness to in the United States uh, with uh, out-of-wedlock children and so on and so forth. Yes, in a place such as South Korea, I don't think Koreans are immune to this because people react to incentives or disincentives, and when the environment restructures and reshapes itself, people, specifically women and men respectively, react in their own respective ways. So, of course, a lot of people are kind of outraged about this, and this poor 60-year-old woman... She's selling her body, blah, 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 blah. But this is part of a fundamental misunderstanding of the way human beings operate. Very, very few societies take that into account, particularly when they're sort of governing things, right? Governments modestly take this into account in some respects. But frankly speaking, women of this age in the most frank and realistic way of putting it are, are pretty useless, to society, right? Uh, they don't, they can't bear children. They're not physically attractive and thus they're not fertile. Uh, they just don't have anything to offer. So they just kind of get by on a couple of bucks a day and offer their quote unquote services to, to men. In the same sense that a laborer or a former pugilist who's, you know, 50 or 60 years old, uh, he might be able to teach maybe um, people to fight or to, to labor. But as a laborer himself, he doesn't have the same kind of capital that a younger man might in his prime, at least in the physical realm. And remember, these are not oftentimes not very educated people, not well-educated people. So, yeah, that's if you're older and you're well-educated and, I don't know, you studied economics or engineering or whatever, maybe that's a different story. But many of these elderly people, both men and women in South Korea that are suffering from homelessness or or dire poverty, and this has nothing to do with education because they just don't have education. So what's the solution? I'm not going to try to offer one. I don't know. I'm just saying that this is a, a natural consequence and a natural phenomenon we can observe in human beings. Women do their thing. They offer their, their sexuality, even if that sexuality is long gone, basically, because most people my age or younger, we don't wouldn't want to have sex with a 50, 60, 70-year-old ajuma. And men do what they can, um, working with health problems and well past their prime, if they have to, to get by and to survive. That instinct to survive is pretty powerful. I think it's well, it's well noted and can be well seen in the, in the Bacchus lady phenomenon. So this isn't a question of you know, people with weird fetishes, and there are people with those, but rather a question of survival. They really don't have a choice. They can sell these energy drinks, which you know they don't really net them much, you know, five bucks a day, or they can sell themselves for 30 bucks a couple of times a day, and they can get by much better than they can just with selling the drinks. Interesting thing going on in South Korea, I think, and I will be continually observing this phenomenon and seeing where it goes, seeing if there are changes in policy. Once again, thanks for the low bar, and as always, thanks for watching, and you take care. Bye-bye.